And our next poet, our last poet tonight before uh, open mic is John Arthur, John Arthur Sweet. And he has written and performed four full-length theatrical monologues, which have presented across Canada, as well as at the International Dublin Gay Theatre Festival, the Brighton, UK, Fringe, and three times at the Prague Fringe. In 2013, John attended the Spoken Word Residency at the Banff Center. And it was at that point that he ventured into the world of spoken, world, of spoken word poetry and shorter prose monologues. As a spoken word poet, John has performed to date almost exclusively in Montreal, where he has been a regular invited artist at the monthly Words and Music Show. He has also been an invited artist at Massmouth in Boston, and very recently at the Victoria Poetry Project in Victoria, British Columbia. John is a native of Southern Ontario, but has lived in Montreal since 2008. John Arthur Sweet. At the age of 16, I knew certain things. I knew that there were certain people who did certain things that we didn't talk about. These people were usually referred to simply as those people. Those people were always men, and they lived among us, but their true face was hidden. We couldn't see those people for what they really were. Those people were out there. We knew they existed, but we didn't know any of them personally. We had only the vaguest idea of what they did when they were together. And no one we knew knew any of them either. But we knew they were around us. And we knew they were numerous, or at least more than just a few that one of them might live on our street, even. Those people were diabolically clever, though. They blended in, so that you might have been talking to one of them and not even have known it. You may have been talking to one of those people and not even have known it. They were that subtle. But those people did give off certain signs if you knew what to look for. If you knew what to look for, it meant you were one of them. Becoming one of those people was as easy as falling off a cliff. Those people looked directly for too long into the eyes of young men. And if the young man looked back, he was lost. He became one of them. Young men who became one of those people were usually pale and mincing. And their school grades began to drop dramatically while the older men, the one we were really talking about when we said those people, tended to be fleshy-jawed and have roving eyes and employment that was inconstant because they couldn't concentrate. They could be seen sometimes, the younger men, the boys, staggering, ashen-faced from a rendezvous at the home of one of those people, those older men. And when it got to this point, there was no turning back for them. They were lost to us. And then we didn't talk about them anymore, except to refer to them as those people who did those things <laughs> that we didn't talk about. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, 
Sometimes I feel it's necessary to explain that that is not a poem about vampires. <laughs> People get confused. Um, it's actually about, it's, it's about small town southern Ontario in the 1980s and how gay people were viewed. And um, my attempt to kind of see it from inside. And then of course, you know, eventually I discovered I am one of those people. <laughs> um, so yeah, my background is in theater, so I have this tendency to like memorize everything, which is why I'm, I'm not reading. Um, so the, I'm just going to do one more piece, but it's like a fairly long poem. And it's called uh, Heaven. What if some sage, universally regarded as wise, in a seriously scientific, not a fanciful way, informed us this was heaven? Despite occasional appearances, he would say, despite the spoiled fruit, the seemingly lost souls, despite all these black <laughs> holes that might, to the untrained eye, suggest exactly the contrary, this is actually it. Welcome to Elysium. He has proof involving isotopes of helium and things we're not equipped to dispute, facts that are really um, daunting. <coughs> Do you suppose this could be heaven? If it were, no need to speed to the corner to see if the number 13 is running today. Embrace the uncertainty. This roller coaster isn't going anywhere. Where you get off is where you got on. No cause to fret about what things portend. They portend nothing but themselves. They're portents. It's what they do. Punto e basta, the end. <laughs> I suppose this could be heaven. On the way here, an old man holding court in a smelly doorway gave me a smile of such splendor in return for something that I was lighter for having given away. He gave a smile of such splendor that I saw how eternity exists to anchor our pain, how appearances exist to anchor the truth, how challenges exist to make us choose, how freedom is just the ability to choose heaven. I suppose this is heaven, the way the wind supposes that everything it caresses loves its touch, however rough, and returns it with tendernesses. Okay, this is heaven. Let's just pretend. Neither the beginning of the story nor the end, but the whole book, pages unbound and tossed into the skies, falling like petals at sunset. Or is it sunrise? Is the sun rising or is it setting? Or both? In the words of a corny old fabulous film, do I already love you, or are we only just meeting? This book's signatures are confused. The printer fucked up. We don't know where we are. And this is heaven. But do you suppose there's sorrow in heaven? There's sorrow here, so if this is heaven, there must be sorrow there. Maybe there's sorrow here precisely because this is neither the beginning of the story before the mysterious death by strychnine, before the visitation by the unseen, before the ill-advised move to penetanguishing, nor the end after the detective reveals the only truth 
that fits. The phantoms are subdued and returned to their pits. The lover, lovers leave for their honeymoon in Samaritz. Here, we're neither birthing ourselves nor dying, but being, being in heaven, where there's both sorrow and rejoicing. We're voicing the whole event, sorrow, sowings and harvests, fluttering around us like swallows, heaven sent. Here, where we embrace everything. Here, where we have choices. Here, in our heaven. So, let's make believe that Yes. Despite all who may say, this is heaven we find ourselves in. It's our very first day. Where shall we begin? Merci beaucoup. <laughs>